follow through. Bought a pound and we rode the fuel. I talk shit, but she know it's true. What's Bless up, what's up, my beautiful my people? This your girl Jada, and I have Tay Ali and Thomas next to me here today. And we're here once again to give you the real. We back, y'all. So um, today we have some really, really good topics for you and a special interview for you today in honor of Mental Awareness Month, y'all. Just getting yourself healthy and your mind healthy because that is the most important when it comes down to health today. So let's start with the juicy stuff today. So I, it's sad to say this, but there was a, another cop shooting, but this time it was of a pregnant woman, y'all. And this is Pamela Turner. She was a 44 year old. Um, she's a grandmother of three. And she was shot five times and after being tasered and screaming, I'm pregnant to the cop. So, I mean, so just. I want, I want to, I want, so. Before I go into like how I felt, I want to just go over some of the stuff that I got out of the reports, like from CNN, the Washington Post, and everything, and mm -hmm. from what the uh, sergeant at the police station, uh, Lieutenant Steve Dorrance, he was saying pretty much what happened was the uh, the, the cop, the 11 year veteran Dela Cruz, had been knew her. He suspected mm -hmm. her of having a warrant. He tried to stop her. She said, "You're harassing me." They mm -hmm. got into an altercation, and that time he says that. She somehow grabbed his taser and mm -hmm. uh, did a, what they call a drive stun, and mm -hmm. which caused him to be shocked by the taser. And from that, he fired five shots, which mm -hmm. resulted in killing her once. Uh, of course, like you said, the mm -hmm. they did an examination on her as well, mm -hmm. and the reports from CNN, Washington Post, and everything says that she, she was not pregnant. pregnant. But um, my first uh, first initial reactions, uh, first seeing it. Uh, just putting myself in a position of a black man in America, I was at, I was enraged. I was hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, I couldn't watch it again. You know what I'm saying? But then once I did the research on it, I will be honest, I kind of got mixed views about it right now. Mm. Because I also had to put myself in a position of somebody that was in the military and that was downrange. And I do know situations where women and children have pulled weapons on, on other soldiers. And you have to make a decision at that point, you or me. And that's just the reality of it. And I know people that made the decision that make that choice so that they can come home to their family. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at it from somebody that's in the military and been in that training, if so, if she did grab that taser and so did point it at him, mm -hmm. then legally, by law and it by morale, if I was in that situation, I would have handled it the same way. But putting myself in as a black man, mm -hmm. looking at it, I had to be spectacle of the reports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because looking yes. at that video, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I know how quick it takes to grab. I know mm -hmm. the movements. I didn't see a time in there where she had a taser and was able to fire. Mm -hmm. I did hear a taser go off, yeah. but I think the taser dropped. Even okay. within after that, when you watch it, she laid on the ground for a minute saying that I'm pregnant. He yeah. had yeah. time to see what the situation he was. He, he, he literally stepped up. He yeah. stepped up and then shot her after she screamed. Five so it was like times. about three seconds in between yeah. her screaming that. So you thought about that. Right. So that he walked on her, looked at her, and then paused and fired five shots, one mm -hmm. potentially, I mean, fatally killing her. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I'm looking at the facts, you know, from the outside in with my emotions and my experience, I'm like, nah, something's not right. But from, the, uh, from another point, I could kind of understand if that mm -hmm. is the fact, how that officer responded. Yeah. Yeah, I know that uh, some people are mad at the, um, the officer and things like that, but I also think that being in the black community, that whoever the cameraman was, I feel like he was black. You feel me? Definitely. I feel like he should have spoke up. He should have said something. Yeah. So they they're actually seeing him posted that the the lieutenants and them over in uh, I believe the place is called Baytown, Texas. Mm -hmm. They want the person who did the recording and released it to come step forward. They want to actually interview him. That person hasn't stepped up. Mm. I, th I think. I mean, he should have shouted. He should have said anything. I'm pretty sure the officer, if he knew he was being recorded, but, he wouldn't react. Yeah. I think that just brings us to a, a whole another conversation about when yeah. we do have events like this. The first mm -hmm. thing people do now. Naturally, is just pull their phones out. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, but if there's no recording of it, then that really makes it really a but, lot harder for it uh, to get any kind of justice. Bes besides the fact that she wasn't pregnant, right? Because yeah. I think that's why a lot of it triggered anger. Mm -hmm. How do y'all feel about even how it was handled and everything? Because he's only getting paid 
paid leave right now. That's not a punishment. It's not a vacation. They're saying that, you know, it gives you time so that he can get his mental health, you know, together. Like, what are y'all doing? I mean, I feel like, I mean, I get it. I mean, when I found out that she was pregnant, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, that's crazy. But then now that I know that she wasn't, I feel like even the fact that she was a woman, like, I just feel like a woman in itself does not need a gun to stop her. Yeah. I, that's just how I feel, yeah. and I don't care how, especially if they go against a man. A, and that man was big enough to stop her. He was yeah, a lot he bigger was than big her. As hell. So I mean, it wasn't. I didn't see the point in you have. Okay, you tased her, so probably the tasing enough would have knocked her out. You tased her a couple times, just gonna knock the girl out. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I don't feel like. It's I mean, you really you resulted to take a woman's life, and then you you still even concluded on to shooting her even after she was she screamed she was pregnant because you didn't know whether or not she was pregnant she or not. not and that just shows no what clue. if you, know you see what, what i'm saying what so like he didn't even care because he stepped up right after she screamed i'm pregnant and that was about three seconds in between she screaming that and then he shot her five times yeah. like, she ain't shoot her once he shot her five times like i, I feel like what, what the uh, police uh, system needs to do is they need to put money into a de-escalation training have Definitely. them focus on de-escalates, de-escalating situations. I don't know if it'll have a substantial impact, but I think they need to make a stance at some point that, hey, we mm-hmm. need to learn how to de-escalate situations because Definitely. too many times we're killing people. Mm-hmm. It's people of color most most of the time because they know how to de-escalate with with the people mm-hmm. they want to de-escalate with. They just had so, a dude shot a cop a couple of days ago and he was mm-hmm. ta- he was brought in alive. Yeah. Um, mm. So we, we know how it's definitely handled differently. The, the problem is a lot of times when it comes to this law, the media perpetrates black men as overly aggressive. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. they look at you already as if you're a threat. So I think a lot of the times is that they're, they're just afraid of us. So yeah. you can go uh-huh. through like, like guys in the military. I can see guys go in the military. You can train to do something all day, but when mm-hmm. you're actually out there and you're actually in some type of situation it's totally different when training happens some people freeze up some people don't Mm -hmm. so you could do all the training in the world but until you're in that situation you don't know how really you're going to respond i feel like i won't be satisfied until the the until they acknowledge the disproportionate amounts Mm -hmm. of murders it is for people who uh, definitely of minorities versus white people when it comes Mm -hmm. to being aggressive with the cops because i feel like to be honest it's about the same rates with with resisting arrest and stuff like that because i've seen a lot of videos where where it's like a white lady or a white man or something like that Mm -hmm. and they feel like why the hell are you putting your hands on me like Mm -hmm. what's your badge number and and they getting Mm -hmm. they getting dealt with a a way different way so Mm -hmm. i need i want the police departments to acknowledge that it's a problem and take initiative how many times do you really have to shoot a person to get them to stop or exactly. to calm down. So exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, over, that's a why is it always why excessive? It one that's yeah. excessive. Even, I feel like even a blank will let somebody know, okay, I'm not playing okay, with I'm your ass. Even if you shoot, shoot it in the air. Well, I guess you probably couldn't do that as a cop, but yeah. like... It's, I feel like it's goes. different. That's, like, that's like, like something that. we had. It's called like rules of engagement. Show, mm-hmm. shoot, shout. So it was like one of the things they used to tell us was like you you, you shout, a hey, put it down, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they continue. It's ways of de-escalating the situation. Yeah. And, and he had a great time to, to de-escalate the situation. Yeah. And it just shows right here that they just don't value black people's lives out here in this country. Mm-hmm. And I think that also it also is a very a very big issue with them mm-hmm. identifying who did what. They really don't know what the person looked like. They take a, a color of a shirt or a color of a pants yeah. or a book bag that a person got on, and yeah. they go looking for a black boy. Like, yeah. Yeah. and that is that. And that's what the report said. Yeah. He assumed people. that he suspected that she had a warrant. He suspected. Yeah. And his reasoning was, well, I know her around her. I've had altercations with her, so I suspected of her to have a warrant. So that yeah. gives you, because you think somebody is a mm. criminal, because of certain things, you think you could just pull up on them and just, he, he caused the situation. Yeah. yeah. Did, did they verify if she actually had the warrants out? They have, I, I, I looked for it. I'm not no sure. reports have shown nothing yeah. about it. Cause it was actually, and that's fishy to me. It was actually uh-huh. a video. I don't know <laughs> if y'all is. seen it. It was a guy, he had uh, long dreads, and they had came on his property, mm-hmm. and they were trying to detain him. And he was like, I'm not who you think I am. Like, yeah. just yeah, because yeah, I've seen that. Just because yes. I have dreads. It's like, how do I have a warrant like, in Louisiana? Yeah. I live in Texas. I'm like, yeah. you don't even know who I am. And you're talking about, 
I have a warrant. And you don't even problem. know. And that's a big problem. So they, they have to figure something out because that profile of, mm-hmm. of aesthetics, of hair, and and and, and, and so many black people, people with but it's, 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 it's not just it's not just black people too because when you look at places like Arizona, Nevada, they they're doing that with Hispanic people. They're just minorities in period, but they're doing that with people that are going through like making up checkpoints saying, "Well, I think you were from across the border." And state legislation is allowing these certain things to happen. So yeah, you definitely got to get involved in the laws Stop to prevent this. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna keep it on moving. Um, what we really wanted to talk about was bring a shed light on the amount of human trafficking that is happening in Atlanta, and just really bringing the topic into uh, to, into the conversation because we really want people to be aware of it like just really 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 be aware that this is happening in our city in our home right outside the <laughs> door really so yeah. we just want that awareness to come to light so um really what has been happening lately we have a little bit of statistics for you um atlanta has been identified as one of the cities with the highest incidences of child sex traffic top 14 wow and between 200 and 400 adolescent girls are sold in a month in Atlanta. Wow. As well as 65% of men who purchase sex with female children in Atlanta live in suburban areas outside of the 285 perimeter. Just wow. to add some more statistics to that, yeah, a lot of it more. isn't just about the, the, the sex trade. Some of it, there's different factors of human yeah. trafficking. So another mm-hmm. one is with the organ trade that's going on. Mm-hmm. And Atlanta is a big yes. hub that's going on. Uh, 2017 reports from Global Finance said that the industry makes between $840 million to $1.7 billion. And a lot of these people mm-hmm. that are being getting kidnapped mm-hmm. uh, with their organs, guys like Kendrick Johnson mm-hmm. that happened in 2013 mm-hmm. that got Albany, um, Augusta, yeah, Augusta, and they found yeah. his yeah. organs took it out. They had a male model who uh, went to California last I heard year. About that. I heard uh, about uh, that. His car broke down, and uh, the black po- dude, right? Yep, black yeah. dude model from mm-hmm. Atlanta went to LA. Car broke down. Cops picked him up, took him to the gas station. They never seen him again. They found him seventy two day uh, seventy two days later. Mm-hmm. Organs are missing. Damn. So a lot of this stuff that's going on is becoming because not only just because of sex trade, but uh, mm-hmm. they're doing it for organs. Mm-hmm. And look where we're located. We got the 20, the 85, not mm-hmm. any major hub yeah. comes through As Atlanta. well as it's a lot of um, tourism here. So what they do is they we have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of concerts. We have a lot of games. We just had the Super Bowl here. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to understand that this is real. This, ha- this is actually happened. I have a friend that it happened to her right outside of a restaurant in a parking lot. Somebody tried to abduct her, okay? So, like, y'all it's need happening. to understand this happens, and this is something that you need to be aware of. And don't go nowhere by yourself, especially as a woman. Like, yeah. please, like, goodness, don't go nowhere, but especially around Atlanta. This don't Asian, be walking around the um, street. Yeah. <laughs> His agent, uh, Taylor, reported right around the Super Bowl that they actually had an increase in human trafficking, that the FBI uh, arrested 169 people mm. the week of the Super Bowl just because of the increase in human trafficking that was coming through. So this stuff is real. Oh, yeah, oh my goodness. But it's yeah, insane. it's just definitely something that we wanted to push that light on. human work? Well, I, I got right here is saying know. that the main organ that is sold. Well, how much would you pay for it? Uh, I'm a, the main organ it ranges between fifteen thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Are people Ooh. are going? They say yeah. that the uh, every somebody. within every hour somebody is getting an illegal uh, kidney transplant. Ten percent of the organs yes. that people are getting through transplants or whatever, ten percent of them came from the black market. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a guy that Oprah that they was rewarding uh, Oprah about. Mm-hmm. Um, can't think of the lady name right now, but um, she pretty much, uh, they use her cells and stuff like that. Harriet a lot. Yep, Harriet yeah. a lot. And she has this cell that's uh, rare. It's like one in a billion called the high Lee gene. Mm. And so that they learn how to kind of study uh, science through the human body. At yeah. least 60 people of the Nobel Prize use her cells. DNA. And so there are a lot of people are saying that they're targeting African Americans mm-hmm. because of their genetics. And then Atlanta is a hub or where Woo-hoo. are you gonna find most black people? Yeah. And, <laughs> and I think that was you the that was the hit, that was the hidden message in get out. Probably. Get out. Yeah. Like, Yo, and when you think about, think about it, it, it probably mm-hmm. is shedding when, when, light on the black market and stuff like that, how they want to use ourselves. They like they love our genetic makeup. They know how important our body is. Remember, he was don't. sitting at the table yeah. and he was telling them, he yeah. was like, if I, had, if I had your genetics, I'll be a beast at, you know what I mean, yeah. Taekwondo and all that. Or even when they took him outside 
And they, he didn't even know they was auctioning them. And mm. they were like, well, why are people doing it? He was like, well, people are doing it because black is in style or mm. because of their genetics or because of their health. Or some people are doing it because of oh, the yeah. sex mm -hmm. when they were touching it. So it, 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 human trafficking has so many aspects, but yeah. we got to be aware. We got to figure out ways to make sure, like, we're calling and checking on each other. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're leaving mm. out in Paris. And it's sad, but ladies, y'all got to probably start doing things to, like, maybe keeping pepper spray, tasers, tasers. a pistol. Yeah, I got to say no. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a woman learning how to protect themselves. Yeah, so I have that's a lot of fr I have friends that's now so really so, considering Yeah, uh, I got some no, resources, no, uh, some, no, some resources for people. Like if y'all see something that's going on with human trafficking here in mm -hmm. Atlanta, it's a place called Out of Darkness. Um, it's another place called Beloved Atlanta mm -hmm. in it. And uh, no for sale, uh, not for sale. And these mm. pretty much, these organizations are protected under the Section 501 panel code. So it's like a non a non profit. So they're they're doing uh, like helping people get back into society, uh, helping people who are suspected of, or if you know anything, you can call these organizations. And we got to report this stuff because yeah. it's going Definitely. on and a lot of people are not reporting it. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, that's the main problem as well. So and we're going to also take it on to the next topic. Um, so pretty much we also wanted to bring you a new idea of something that has not really been happening before. But We, we said it first. To, we have <laughs> we said it first. here we on said this it first. show, okay? <laughs> so um, it really is taking a sabbatical for one year every seven years as a benefit for your job. So what we're really saying is having paid leave that is granted to an employee so that they may study or travel for a certain period of time after after seven years. Seven Years. Seven years. So <laughs> that's what we want to basically really boil down on is this is after you have established, you've been working hard, and your mind you is really in a space key. where you've earned this. You know, you've yeah. earned this time to just study or travel and do what you want to do without having the pressure of yeah. work. Yeah, for a year. So what I, you guys I, I, think about Go this? ahead. Start. I think, I think that this would be a, a great thing to implement into a lot of companies because it's a lot of people who dedicate damn near their, like, their whole, most of their life to these companies. Mm -hmm. And so I think, hell, they deserve that year of paid leave where they can go travel and do different things and mm -hmm. don't have to worry about being in their office and stuff like that. And that also gives you time to like balance with your family, get back in mm -hmm. touch with your kids because a lot of times we have uh, parents and stuff like that who work overtime and, and have exactly. jobs with busy seasons and stuff like that. So th that's precious time that you can have with your family. And that also give, makes you a better worker because mm -hmm. if I have a job that thinks enough of me to give me a year off, I'm going to go, when I go back, I'm going harder. Even, even, <laughs> I'm going even, hard, okay? even, even, I'm going hard to keep my job for seven years because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to people go get yeah that's job. gonna make yeah. people go get jobs too because i'm like shit I, in seven years i'm gonna go ahead and i'm, I'm gonna travel and i'm gonna start planning year. and and a lot of things too because it's a it's a lot with people like they can't travel because they have to work or mm -hmm. it, so that gives them time to to build up and save forward and 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 be able enjoy to explore life. and travel yeah, because enjoy your that, life. that's gonna affect a lot of people that's gonna give a lot more people time to really explore uh, the world and travel and stuff like that. And these companies yes. got it because they make a lot of money off of it. And us. the quality of work that they receive is going to be better. Exactly. I guarantee that's you an investment. the, the that's time that's an investment. rate that it's it takes them to do stuff is yeah. going to be faster. Like you have to think about like your, this is going to contribute to your mental health. Yeah. yeah. And that is something huge because what you're going to do is you're, that is going to bring you time that you might not have had at all to use with mm -hmm. your family, with you just traveling the world with you. You might get a degree you know you want it yeah but I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. something that is and just when you do something repetitive all the time you lose passion for yeah. it sometimes mm -hmm. it becomes it doesn't become your passion your dream like like school you you do it so much as repetitive like some days you just there and you're going yeah. through the motion so you know uh, <laughs> you threw my ass off <laughs> <laughs> but taking a break mm -hmm. it gives you a reason to give you think like damn this is why i love doing this this mm -hmm. is why i like doing my job you know what i mean and it's just gonna recharge you and get you back in the game we all need a break bro and your mental oh, health yes. if you if you can't have if your mental health is in there yeah mm -hmm. the, what you producing ain't gonna be as good so companies right. need to invest in this because y'all got it you do they go do. ahead you and do. spin that and, and you're gonna get triple the work and output mm -hmm. You are, and the performance is going to be amazing. I think it's, you just have to care enough about your are employees. Are you talking about all companies, though? Like, even small companies? Big ones. Too? Oh, it's going to have to be it's regulated be in some type of way. Some way. You got to have a check. And then yeah. also, you have to, you have to have, so like, also, you have to have the amount of performance. Like, level has to be good. Because you can't just be sitting yeah. there for seven years and ain't do nothing. Right. And, and, and just expect the whole year. And stuff like that. You well, feel I, for them folks, too. Okay, yeah. yes, yes, yes. You yeah, are, but that's, that's also a big company. That's a major company. They got it. They got it. They got it. We Trust me, bro. When I was in the army, the army, 
<laughs> a lady, uh, a McDonald's manager made more than a uh, specialist in a private in the army. A lady at McDonald's, a manager. Managers at McDonald's put up. They get in that shit. check, bro. Don't let them fool you. Yeah. Alrighty, so now we wanted to also bring up a topic that could that definitely contributes to your mental he- mental health. Um, thinking beyond now, what are you doing now to prepare yourself for the future, your future? I I feel like me personally, it just started with me putting myself in the right situation and putting myself around the right people. I really had to realize that life is about who you know and not what you know. I mean, it's about what you know too, yeah, but you gotta know something. Tribute. But mm-hmm. you gotta know enough to get around the right people and network. So I feel like that's where I'm at right now. I'm just dipping and dabbing into certain things. You feel me? <laughs> so uh, that's what I feel like I'm doing to help myself right now. Um, I think that with what I'm doing to prepare myself for my future is really just kind of boiling down on getting the knowledge that I need in order to do yeah. what I want to do later on. Um, I really understand now that it's something that I know what I want to do. <laughs> it's just now I need to have I need all the tools to yeah. do what I need to do. And what that is is just really um, me being in school, me going, me doing stuff outside of school to really help my to really build my craft and make my craft um, better than what it was yesterday. That's how I always am yeah. doing. I'm always trying to do something that's like, okay, I just want to, whatever I'm doing, I want to, I want it to build into something else. And I always thought that, okay, if I'm doing business, if I'm going to, if I say I'm going to do that, I'm going to start, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to start doing, doing, doing different things that I might not know how to do right now, mm-hmm. but I'm 21. So exactly. by the time I hit the age of 25, I'm going to know what I'm doing. I'll be running circles around everybody, but mm-hmm. that's what I'm doing to prepare myself for my future. I would say mine is definitely similar to Jada right now. I'm trying to build my base. I'm trying to build my network of yeah. people. Um, trying to get people that's in different places, in different arenas. Because I never know what I'm gonna do in the future. But I'm I'm exactly. building my contacts and my and my networking uh, together. So I'm and I'm also trying to dibble and dab into new things. Like not, now I'm trying to get into stocks and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if it's particularly forex or anything like that. But I'm starting to like uh, read. I'm reading right now uh, how to make money off stocks by william o'neill mm-hmm. um uh i also subscribed to the wall street journal i finally did that i didn't yeah, want to spend the money please do. That's the dark, ain't it like a dollar welcome it's to a, the dark no, 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 that shit is like 16 dollars a month yeah, yeah, it, it got digital and you can you it's a good but, but it's, but it's an investment it's an investment in your investment and, and, yes. and it's really yes. putting me on to a lot of things that's going on in politics and stuff that i'm usually oblivious to like yeah the, like the u.s china trade and how that's affecting stocks and how that's affecting the market and stuff like that with the tariffs and stuff so i'm just like i was thinking I was putting stuff off like that for a while but I'm like you need to be abreast on different things so when you go mm-hmm. into different spaces you can you can identify with that you can comment on that and you can speak on that and then you can see how that's affecting future endeavors that you can do right. so I'm mm-hmm. like as a as a as a business person I'm going mm-hmm. into the business arena I'm going into account and I, I need to be abreast on what's going on with with the country and the market so I'm like I'm gonna invest in myself so that's what I'm mm-hmm. doing right now that's the best um, what I would say is like far as this topic I was thinking about it and then what I really came to the conclusion is because I, I believe mm-hmm. that sometimes plans don't always go as planned, right? Definitely. So what I'd rather do is I'd rather just give some advice to some of the listeners or like some of my homeboys that are mm-hmm. listening or that's just locked up. And I think the best thing for you to do is you really got to sit there and dig deep and mm-hmm. you got to really understand what your purpose is, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like sit there, realize what your purpose is, whether, whether it's you know, starting your own lawnmower business, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, being an mm-hmm. electrician or getting a trade or going to college, bro. You Once you find your what your purpose is, you sit mm-hmm. down, you create a blueprint, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and this is what yeah. I'm going to do, small goals. And once you create those blueprints and looking in the future of what I want to do, mm-hmm. surround yourself around people that, that want to help you and see mm-hmm. the same in your goals, and that's going to help you progress. And, and just put your passion into it, dig mm-hmm. deep, and shit going to suck, bro. Mm-hmm. But through that future, yeah. you, you think about the shit that you do today is going to benefit you in the future. So mm-hmm. just stay down yeah you definitely just train on like whatever your craft is and whatever that is you find what that is and you find what makes you passionate we find what makes you wake up in the morning and sometimes it's that thing that you be up at 5 a.m in the morning doing and you might think that it's something crazy that you might never be able to make money off of but hey you can make money off of anything nowadays Uh, and also it, it's thinking. It's about thinking beyond the moment. Your yeah. your current state that you're in right now is not what you're gonna be in five years, ten years, twenty years. I don't care what it is. It's not. You're not gonna be the same person. Yeah. It's about your mind and what right. you think you can do and what you think you have the ability to be able to do. Right. I think I think that's right. a big thing he hit on too with uh, finding your purpose of uh, like finding that niche. 
is very, very, very important. Because mm-hmm. if you could do that one thing better than everybody else, mm-hmm. then you can make you can make a very successful business. Or you can make yourself very comfortable uh, lifestyle wise. Um, I was seeing too, because like like I was saying, I was trying to get into stocks and stuff like that. And the thing I kept seeing after watching these videos and reading books and articles and stuff like that is mm-hmm. you what you have to do. You can't just aimlessly invest in a bunch of different things. You can't. You what you do is find your niche market. You find if you into tech. You start reading articles about mm-hmm. tech companies and yeah. stuff like that, they always and figure invest out what those like investors, yeah. what those mm-hmm. investors want to see. Mm-hmm. So you you got to start thinking like a tech investor, what what's good for them mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So you start to understand that company, and that helps you understand other things. And terminology, so, exactly. You know terminology. And so and so if you just aimlessly investing in a lot of different things, mm-hmm. then you you you're gonna be a master of none. Like mm-hmm. jack of all right. trades is a master of none. That's cool yeah. and all sometimes, but like if you don't find your niche, even within things like stocks, you have to find your niche. If you end up if you in the clothing and, and, and athletics and stuff like that, start looking at Nike, Adidas, Under Armour stocks. Go into that, and so you can understand what those companies want in mm. in their in their uh, business. And I even I know we talk about this all the time, but even <laughs> like thinking about the future and stuff, like I even think about it as far as relationships, like mm. like. Because I feel like a relationship is like a business as well. It's like you're investing your time, your energy into this. And so mm-hmm. when I'm dealing with somebody, I'm like, can I see myself with this person mm-hmm. for this long? Or can I see myself raising children with this person or creating a generational wealth? I, I think about because I'm getting older now. So I'm thinking about mm-hmm. who I might spend my life with. And mm-hmm. I got to think about, okay, what where I need to be today and w- what type of things I expect as far as expectations mm-hmm. on that um, that type of union. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's thinking beyond now in general. We definitely want you to just know that the current, pretty much saying that the current state that you're in right now is not the current state that you're going to be in forever. Every yeah. life changes in a second. You be feeling one day, one, you be feeling one way yeah, one I day, and then another day, <laughs> and then the next day you fine and you walking around and you yeah. cool. Like you know how many <laughs> times I've been like, bro, we all feel that way. <laughs> this, you know how many times yeah. I've dropped out of school. Just like, man, you know what? Like, fuck you this. Like, I'm I'm <laughs> you, have, you have to realize that nothing. You gotta dig is, deep, bro. Everything is it's temporary. temporary. Yeah. Everything is temporary. Yeah, because then, like, even people who like, when you give up on shit. Once that time passes, you like, mm-hmm. damn, I would have been, over, I would have been done by now. Mm-hmm. And so it's all going be pass. It's all temporary. <laughs> I can't drop out now. I've been there yeah. for years. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, man, you know, we're just I'm, finished. I'm here already, okay, I can't go nowhere. Right, they temporary. got these right. loans already. <laughs> right, so. But I, I think, I think that uh, that's kind of like, kind of why we wanted to, mm-hmm. to have you come on here. Definitely. Which was about to get <laughs> yeah, so we just gonna roll it on in there. So. We um, have C.R. Lewis here today. Thank you for coming. Um, so she's a Ph.D. student at Georgia State, and we just want you to tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Um, so I am a fourth year. I'm a fourth mm-hmm. year in the clinical and community psychology Ph.D. program. At English. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's community psychology, which focuses on prevention mm-hmm. um, and community building and systems level change. Mm-hmm. And then there's clinical psychology, which um, most people are familiar with, like therapists and focusing on pro- um, treatment and diagnosis. And so I'm merging the two, working on prevention and individual wow. treatment. And so I'm doing two PhD programs at the same time I should get two degrees right it's one (laughs) and so the program is five to seven years Mm -hmm. and I'm in my fourth year wow tell them how old you are and where you from and like what got you into that field and why did you want to do that sure that's a lot of questions so you might have to remind me so (laughs) tell them where you're from I'm from Milwaukee Wisconsin um I'm 25 years old I um, went to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee for my undergraduate degree, Mm. and right after um, college, I moved to Atlanta and came to grad school at Georgia State. Um, What got me into um, psychology in general is um, that my mom has bipolar, and so Mm. she was diagnosed when I was 12 years old, um, and she also had um, substance use issues, and she went into rehab for a year. And so kind of growing up with Um, mental illness in my family not Mm -hmm. recognizing that bipolar is a serious mental illness um like anxiety depression you can kind of Mm -hmm. um come back from that and recover Mm -hmm. and just not have it ever in your life but bipolar schizophrenia personality disorders those things are serious mental illness and they're chronic like they can be managed and you Mm -hmm. can be considered in recovery Mm -hmm. but you have to deal with that for your whole life and Mm -hmm. that not only affects you but it affects your children your entire family your community um and the way that others perceive you as well. And so not being able to um, really understand what my mom was going through or why 
she was the way she was. Mm. Um, they would say, like, you know, Lori, you don't know if it's going to be Lori one, two, or three today. Mm. And it was just kind of, like, normalized. And then mm. coming to, um, like, in undergrad, I studied psychology. Mm-hmm. And in undergrad, you really don't learn anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, that is true. This is the reality. <laughs> I had a just friend say, I don't feel like I learned anything. And she nothing. graduated. She just graduated mm-hmm. with psychology. Nothing. Degree. And you can yeah. do nothing with a bachelor's in psychology. Yeah. Wow. So, like, you have to get higher education. Yeah. But being a mm-hmm. first-generation college student, I thought I was going to go to undergrad for four years. And I was going to be a psychologist at the end of it. Uh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. halfway <laughs> through, I learned, like, you have to do research. You have to go to grad school. Wow. And so that's what I'm doing now. Um, so that's kind of Girl, yeah. the story. So yeah. I got a question for you, um, cause me and you beef about this all <laughs> the time. Uh, when it c- pertains to your mental health, how important is sleep? Sleep is very important. That's a good question. Sleep mm. is very important. Because okay. as college students, we don't, we sleep. don't get enough. Okay. And you we know, like sleep. my situation, I literally, like, I'll go days and Sierra will be going in on me, like, you need to sleep. And I'll be like, I got it. But, and it's not just me who feel like this, mm-hmm. but just explain the importance of, like. Yeah. So sleep can um, actually cause psychological disorders. So mm-hmm. um, if you don't sleep enough, your brain never has a chance to recover. And so we, we even think when we're sleeping, but mm. when you get that. Um, I'm not asleep. I don't <laughs> research sleep. So there's mm-hmm. a portion of sleep where your brain is like resting and rejuvena- yeah. rejuvenating. And so if you don't sleep, you're never giving your brain a chance to recover. Mm. And so wow. like people who have PTSD, they find it hard to sleep because they're having nightmares. And so it can be mm. really hard for people with PTSD to sleep or people who have bipolar are in a mania. It's hard for them to sleep. Mm-hmm. They can sleep for like two hours and feel well rested. Wow. But that's actually taking a toll on your body like Mm. um people can lose concentration and your appetite can be low like Mm -hmm. just because you're not sleeping enough Mm. so it can kind of mimic the symptoms of attention deficit like adhd Mm -hmm. like you can have trouble concentrating Mm -hmm. focusing paying attention but it's just because you're not getting enough sleep I was gonna I, uh, uh, yeah, I, once you you hit on a good point of uh, mm-hmm. ADHD. So I, I, I personally that. feel uh, mm-hmm. I want to know your your perspective on um, a lot of people prescribing uh, diagnosing a lot of I feel like black and brown children with ADHD. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like it's excessive or do you feel like they're diagnosing them properly? So I think that so the DSM the diagnostics. Um, manual that we use Mm -hmm. to make diagnoses it's made by all white men Mm -hmm. um, who are psychiatrists or doctors Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people have been trying to do research on different cultural lenses and how schizophrenia is more popular in the black more popularly diagnosed in the black Mm -hmm. community and things like that I think that there's a cultural component to Mm -hmm. like how black kids act yeah. that's not mm-hmm. recognized and mm-hmm. taken into consideration yeah, when it's learning diagnosed. styles too Definitely. like yeah. with different yeah. kids. they, yeah. sh- they yeah. show I, I was reading a report just about that how a lot of the times in school the person that's teaching the class mm-hmm. is usually a white woman and she doesn't know how to discipline or deal with let's say deal with a black boy who mm-hmm. may just be hyperactive and so because they don't want to deal with them they mm-hmm. dope them up and it's interesting because they'll put a lot of kids on this drug called Ritalin mm-hmm. right that's just damn near in the same component as crack mm-hmm. cocaine but then they'll lock the father up for selling crack mm-hmm. cocaine so mm-hmm. you lock the daddy up for selling it and but then mm-hmm. you put that child on Ritalin which causes other health issues yeah. and now they got to be diagnosed with a whole bunch of stuff yeah mm-hmm. I, I feel like I've seen them like in friends that I've, I've had even like through college where mm-hmm. they feel like I have to have my my Adderall that they say yeah. I have Adderall is yeah. popping in college. Like, I can't, I can't, I it's can't crazy. focus without it. And I'm Definitely. like, I'm and like, I used to tell them, I'm like, you can focus. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times that hinders some dependent. people, and it makes them think that yeah. they that they can't do it without it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, if you just sit down, you really you really can learn this. You but can, sometimes I feel like somebody be is hindered by the title, mm-hmm. and they feel like they, without without the medication, they mm-hmm. they they're not they're not as smart. So I I'm think like, they're conditioned that way too. Sometimes people can benefit from it. Some some people mm-hmm. really do have yeah. ADHD. Yeah, 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 they yeah, really yeah. do benefit from the medication. Like if they sit down, they can do it. Yeah. But they can do it so much better if they have the medication. Right. So yeah. like yeah, yeah, that's I'm, true. I am very hesitant to like I can't prescribe medication anyways, but I'm very <laughs> hesitant to like endorse medication. But mm-hmm. for some people they really do right. do better with it. They don't need it, mm-hmm. but they can do a lot better with it. Um and I think that like not shaming people for doing what works for them is really important. But yeah. knowing like 
um, for some people, having that diagnosis is empowering. Like, they think they're stupid. They think they really can't do anything. Yeah. And then they find out they have this. And they're like, oh, yeah. okay. So it's like yeah. a normalized yeah. thing. Yeah. Now they're like, you know what? I can't, I got a yeah. way to figure yeah. it out. Okay. I, yeah. No so name it. it. See, that's why we got it. Yeah. 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 Because some yeah. people find it really empowering, some mm-hmm. find it very stigmatizing. Like, oh, I have to go to special ed because I can't concentrate. And other people are like, so, oh, dang, mm-hmm. this is why I can't do it. So like, you know how you was talking about like how people was like like concentrating or trying to bash it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, do you think maybe uh, because of how people perceive mental illness is why some people don't go to therapy? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. Especially like in a black community. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that I'm really interested in is like promoting therapy to the black community because mm-hmm. um i don't know if you guys i don't know what the black alter like the male alter black male alternative to it is but mm-hmm. like the strong black woman schema where it's like i have yeah. to be strong i have mm-hmm. to keep it all together i have to do everything and if i ask for help then i'm weak mm-hmm. and so that idea that like asking for help well, means you're weak. i think yeah. the male, i think the male alternative to that is the stoic emotionless you don't yeah. feel yeah. i don't have no yeah. emotion yeah. Yeah. i'm hard yeah. i don't i can take hard. nothing affects me yeah. Nothing yeah. 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 and i think that's that's what gets a lot of black men to feeling like they don't know how to take this deal with their emotion and they don't know how and a lot of times we in the black community as males don't know how to express it to other people definitely so yeah that i think that's the that that's the big male alternative i've seen that a lot in my family mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i just don't know what therapy can really do for you and it I gives you that's tools a great question so therapy is what you make it and so for some people therapy is learning skills mm-hmm. like yeah. uh, you know i'm feeling really overwhelmed all the time i'm on edge i'm anxious like mm-hmm. you know i just I don't know how to just sit down and just do it. And so therapy can help you get in touch with your emotions, like figure out what that feeling is. Like I feel mm. my heart racing right now. Like I know that's anxious, like mm. anxiety. Mm. So I'm trying not to mess up my words. But if I didn't know what that feeling was, I was mm. just uncomfortable all the time. I would just avoid situations like this because I don't mm. understand like what is the purpose of having anxiety. The purpose yeah. of having anxiety is knowing like that you're in danger, mm. right? And so therapy can help you to learn to identify your emotions and then learn like coping skills like what do you do when you feel anxious okay yeah. like take a breath yeah oh, feels better now. <laughs> it's like you can like in the moment you don't you might not think about those things but therapy can help you problem solve and get skills to deal with things that you might not have thought of and it's just like an objective person like that person doesn't know you they don't know your situation they don't know anyone around you and so mm-hmm. they can be really objective yeah. and they're really I mean, non-judgmental how would you really know when you feel like you need therapy like, when's and a great time to be like, okay, I need therapy? And I think that's a really good question that a lot of people struggle with. They're like, you know, I got it. I don't need mm. therapy. Therapy is for crazy people, people who are on the street talking to themselves. Mm-hmm. Therapy is for anyone. You don't yeah. have to be going through anything to be in therapy. Um, like, you could just want to work on yourself. When you're ready to mm. work on yourself, mm. that's when you're ready for therapy. So you could be going through a, a crisis <coughs> situation. Like, you could have, you know, some family issues or go- going through a breakup. Or you could just be like, you know... Um, I'm a year from graduating for co- from college. Things are going really well, and I have the time right now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to... Mm-hmm. And therapy is not cheap. It is. Yeah. It Ooh, can be investment. expensive, yeah. but it's an investment in, in yourself. Like, I'm learning myself more. I'm learning mm-hmm. skills. So you're in therapy, too, sometimes. I'm in therapy. I actually went to therapy mm-hmm. this morning. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard work. <laughs> it's yeah. exhausting. Mm-hmm. I cried the whole session. I took oh a nap. Goodness. And I was like, you know, I can feel good because <laughs> I'm going to come talk yes. about yeah. Promoting therapy. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question for you. Um, so do you really think that the um, those online sites or those apps that have, like, those little texting therapies are actually effective? Um, there is a researcher at Georgia State who mm-hmm. researches whether they're effective or not, and mm-hmm. I haven't read the research, so mm-hmm. I can't answer that question. <laughs> but I think that it's a new alternative therapy that's mm-hmm. coming, like virtual reality therapy mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. online Technology. therapy yeah, yeah, for yeah. people who have really <laughs> like, high social anxiety and they want that help, but they mm-hmm. can't go out of their house. Like they're paralyzed mm-hmm. to a fear of like going mm-hmm. out in the world. And wow. so if they can, you know, do online therapy or mm-hmm. texting therapy to get them up to a level where they feel comfortable going now in the world and doing things I think it's important mm. yeah, so I don't know really. the effectiveness on it, but I know there's a lot <laughs> I, of research I think sometimes we just uh, cause like you said something to me once like well you can you can have different people like you can try different people out to find what works for yeah. you mm-hmm. and I think that sometimes is like dealing with people too like you could you gotta find somebody that you can talk to yeah. about the things Definitely. that goes yeah, on it, that, yeah, yeah. I think that's a form with. Mm-hmm. I think that's a form of therapy in itself mm-hmm. like being able to unload certain things mm-hmm. off 
or even having somebody that's around you that give a fuck. Because yeah. I, when I tell you, Sierra, irks, like irritates <laughs> me and be like, you need to you go to. You probably the, need it. I, I'm gonna be <laughs> honest with you. So like that's like we could talk about it, but like mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I probably do need therapy. We all need like, it. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell her all the time. I feel like it's only two reasons that people actually try to listen to you. Is they're gonna um. listen to you? No, nah, people feel like it this. doesn't Talk really about benefit it. you. Because at the end of the day, what's wrong with you is what's wrong with you. You feel me? You have to work on yourself. You feel me? That's how I feel about nah, it. No, I, I, so I, I, I feel I feel that, right? But I, I'll give you real, like, examples. Like, sometimes I really be beating myself up. I could be really down. Anybody you know me, like, you know, I, I, I deal with PTSD and all of that. My emotions would be up and down. And it could be times, bro, like recently. And Sierra could talk to me, bro. And sometimes we just need people that actually care, like, she doesn't yeah. say the shit, bro. Like, some days I really be like, fuck school, bro. Yeah. Like, I really be going through it, bro. And mm-hmm. I really appreciate you. Yes, yeah, so I really appreciate you because even though I, I say I'm confident, I go through shit, bro. I'll be wanting to quit school. I'll be going through, like, I'll be feeling like people don't understand me sometimes. Yeah. And, and being able to talk to her, bro, she, she really helps me push through it and get my mind together. And she's really the one that, like, made me be like, all right, you know what? I'm going to go to therapy. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I've been for the most of my life, bro. What I do, and I think what black men are taught to do, is just to bottle up emotion and don't mm-hmm. show it. And yeah. so all my life, all I do is bottle up my emotion. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't deal with it, bro, it's going to explode. It's mm-hmm. going to come out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'm getting emotional now, because I hold so much of it in. So yeah. when you finally get it off, you feel so much better, bro. Definitely. I promise you. So just try it out. And you can't knock it until you try it, bro. Yeah. I, th- I think a big thing, too, is like what you were saying before you were hinting on it's like it may be a therapist for you like like you mm-hmm. you may go to a therapist you'd be like that's not the therapist for me that doesn't mean therapy is not for you that yeah. means that therapist that is not for you, you. Yeah. so i feel like a lot of people uh like i just encourage people to go and maybe if you feel like this that therapist wasn't the right fit go and explore try another therapist mm-hmm. and, and eventually you'll probably find a therapist that's that's for you but mm-hmm. i feel like don't knock it just because you yeah, you feel definitely. like that person didn't connect with you because that means that's that's just not the therapist for you you exactly. need you need somebody else so yeah I got you I gotta invest in that then cause like I was saying it's just like I either feel like people listening to you just to listen to you and they can't really help you or mm-hmm. I feel like people listening to you and they just gonna use it against you later on but there's people out there that care about you bro yeah. mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta want people to care about I, what I would do is I would push people away that were mm-hmm. trying to care about me because I will always feel like the people that always said that they care about me is always the people that hurt me. But that's the, that's just what something Reality, you gotta deal with in yeah. life, bro. You you gotta oh, you I gotta, gotta put it I out feel there. Like all good things come to an end, so I just prepare for it all the time in my head. I don't mm-hmm. feel like I have to. I feel like it's good now. Let me enjoy this right now. But when it comes to an end, I'm not gonna yeah. be mad when it. You happens. sound just like me, mm-hmm. like a, like a year <laughs> ago. But <laughs> and I think it's really important in therapy, like to know, like what you were saying, mm-hmm. it's not gonna work unless you work. Like mm-hmm. therapy is kind of like a personal trainer for your mind. Mm. Like, I can teach Mm. you the exercises. Mm. I can tell you how to do it. But when you leave Mm -hmm. this office, Mm. you have to go home. You have to do the work. You have to practice. You have to work it. And then come back and tell me how it's going. Mm -hmm. I'll teach you some new exercises. And, like, therapy is, like, training your mind. It's rewiring these things that you thought you knew and didn't really yeah. you didn't realize like how badly it's affecting you to um you know just thinking about other ways to to think yeah training I, your bra- training I, I your recently got a got a new perspective on um therapy too because i had actually had someone like in the uh i'm always anybody that know me know i'm always in office of black student mm-hmm. achievement one of our advisors OBSA. has actually been, uh, <laughs> have been uh going to therapy recently and so <clears throat> he was explaining that he he didn't realize what was going on with him like she was saying before mm-hmm. like he didn't realize he had anxiety so it's like you can't it's like that move i think it was the exorcist or something you can't you can't fight your demons until you can mm-hmm. identify what it is so if you just have those feelings and don't know what what it is like it's it's hard to combat that so i was, and he was just talking about like how he learns tools to to like cope with that in in different things like that so i think that like I'm, I'm gonna definitely get into it soon. Yeah. Um, like she was saying, it's it's, it's, it's expensive sometimes. You know. Oh well, Georgia State don't, doesn't Georgia State have like that's that? all. Yeah, about to ask you're gonna be on the yeah, wait list. Like, do you do you know some like resources? So I can tell yeah. you some resources. So if you're a student at Georgia State, mm-hmm. um, you can go to the Georgia State Counseling Center and you can get 15 free sessions each year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. We also have the Georgia State Psychology Clinic, um, which is located in the Urban Life Building. And so graduate students in training are the therapists. And so you get 
um, someone who's in training and mm. paying a special. You do that, eye. right? That's amazing. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. So that. you get a special mm. eye on like, like students care about you because wow. like you doing You're well is how they do well. Wow. And then um, like we're that. watched by that. licensed clinicians. So it's like mm -hmm. two people have eyes on like what's going on and two mm. people are thinking about how to best help you. Um, and we have a sliding scale. So it's $15 for students. But if you don't have a job or 15 is a lot for you, you can fill out a form mm -hmm. and they can, um, you know, make it cheaper. Some people pay as low as like $2 for a session. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. Per, oh so you can get it paid. At, so you have to go to the office in Urban Life or something? Um, so the 10th floor of the Urban Life building, the uh -huh. Georgia State Psychology Clinic. If y'all don't know what wow. I said, that's the attached to the Student Center West. Yeah. yeah. The Sorry. little boring looking building. <laughs> the little yeah. boring looking building yeah. that look old. Yeah. But that's so you it. Can just go on the website and you can call them on the phone and say I'm interested and then mm -hmm. you'll go through a phone screening process so this is also an important uh -oh. part of therapy wow. like it takes a lot of work just to get to the therapy yeah. so I'm yeah. gonna explain the process for the Georgia State Psychology Clinic okay. and then I'll okay. explain other resources mm -hmm. so the process is like you call them on the phone you say I'm interested in doing therapy mm -hmm. and then they'll say like okay we can do a phone interview with you they'll ask you a bunch of questions like your history what you want to work on mm -hmm. um, like where you work things like that and then a therapist will call you and say like come in for a session it's a two-hour session where you fill out an application that talks about like you know different problems that you're having and then you talk with the therapist for like an hour just telling them what it is that you want to work on like a whole kind of like brief life history so that the therapist can know um, what things to consider when trying to help treat you and then considering whether you're a good fit for the clinic or whether you need more intense care mm. and whether mm. they can refer you somewhere okay. else. Gotcha. And then once you do the intake, then you set up sessions and you come every week for 50 minutes. It's an hour, but really it's 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and you just talk with them every session and you're working on goals and things like that. And so it's $15 for students, but that can be slided lower if you need it. It's 23 for alumni and $30 for community members. Wow. That's yeah. lit. So, so I did open not, to the community. So I did yeah. not yeah. know that was that was available. On yeah, campus. no. Look, I thought you just had right to wait there. on that because I know we get the fifteen free ones, but I know a lot of people who's been waiting for like yeah. months and they, months because it's like so backed up. Yeah, because yeah, actually, oh, wow. it's not so many. You got yeah, so it's many. so many people mental, at Georgia State. Like mental, we like so for y'all didn't know this is mental like health awareness. <laughs> yes. Well, like more people are talking about it, so more people are trying to go to yeah, these resources, yeah. and a lot of people have been complaining about that because it's not that many people in there. And I think it's so only 15 wow. counselors yeah, yeah, yeah. for that. And who's to say that you like those yeah, particular those ones? Students. So if I want to see a particular person, it may be 15 other people that want to see the same person. So now I got to deal because oh, your yeah. scheduling be crazy already. Like I call <laughs> you, she'll even pick up. She'll text me back. I'm in a meeting. I'm like, damn. So I know if you're busy just doing that, I can't even socialize with her. Mm. I know like their schedules is hectic. And yeah, I actually met somebody um, like two or three weeks ago. It was actually at Kayla uh, dinner that... Um, uh, graduation dinner um it was a lady so what happens is they have to out georgia state has to outsource with another company mm -hmm. to do scheduling and stuff like that for mm -hmm. the therapy thing so she was she had asked me about it because i told her i was at georgia state she was like yeah i know it's extremely backed up because i'm one of the companies that go in and, and work with georgia state to try to get student schedule wow. and it's only so like 15 outsource. therapies yeah because it's wow. so it's so many students it's like it's the, yeah so college you got to think bro like Anything like that's why I say a lot of people think like PTSD or like, mm -hmm. like these distress and trauma is just caused through like the military. But mm -hmm. if you're a student, you got to think about it's how much so stress, stressful. expectations, it's so much you got to deal with real life. Some of us actually got to work, we got to pay mm -hmm. bills, you know, and it's for the first time. So you have to yeah. realize that, too. yeah, so it's some of us, yeah, 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 so that's new. another level of stress. Um, to that. It's new to you. A lot of people might be this their first time in a whole nother city, probably by themselves. Yeah. 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 So you have so much going on, and then you have the expectations expectations of yourself and then of the world and then just all of this coming at you and then now dealing with marginali marginalization and intersectionality and then having to factor in that I'm a black male in America. Mm. When you have all of this weight, like it's it's hard not to go insane. Like you have to commend black men because mm -hmm. like when I told you when I seen that video at first with old girl shooting that I'm going to be honest with you. I felt some type of way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I had to get out of my emotions and mm -hmm. sit there. And, and that's why we got to talk about these type of things. Because yeah. being conscious, of, especially being a minority in this country, and you see what's going on, and you're conscious, mm -hmm. and you see what's going on, it's hard to stay it's, it's hard to stay sane, man. It is. I mean, I think that being in, in this world today, period, period, it's hard to stay sane. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of so stuff that's going tragics, on now that would have never tornadoes. happened years ago. <laughs> but it is happening. So I think that that is also a big deal. Like, I, it's really just... 
you kind of got to know that you have to get into yourself and get into your mind and understand that you have to work on yourself. Regardless, yeah. no current state that you're in is perfect because nobody's perfect. So yeah. there's always something that you can work on when it comes down to your mindset and what the person that you want to be at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Did you want so, a few more resources? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the Georgia State Counseling Center also has um, groups. So there's like an mm. African American women's group. There's a grad student group. There's a be well, wow. do well. We don't even be knowing about that. Oh about that. <laughs> they have free groups for students. So like group therapy. So kind of what we're doing here, but yeah. like with other students about specific topics. Um, the they also have. You can go to Georgia Tech Counseling Center, the Emory wow. Counseling Center. Any wow. university has a counseling center, and yeah. you are able to call them and go there as well. And then there's always like crisis hotlines um, that you can. People think that you can only call them when you're in a crisis or you're feeling suicidal, but if you just need someone to talk to, you can just call. And I've worked for a crisis hotline before, and most of the people, they would just call every day just to check in and just mm. have someone to talk to because wow. they didn't have any family or anything like That's that. That's amazing, though. That's They're amazing. amazing. That's why I say there's people that care, bro. Like, yeah. you have to really care to even do that, to sit yeah. there and talk to somebody no about their issues. Some yeah. people give a fuck about Cause you. Because you're giving your time. Time is just yeah. as valuable as money. Yeah. yeah. And if you guys have insurance, you can... Um, look through your insurance company and you can pay as low as $20 for sessions. Um, there's That's also, if you don't have insurance, there's a website called Open Path Collective mm -hmm. and you can pay between $30 and $60 for therapy. Um, in the grand scheme of things, like mm -hmm. the therapist I go to, her rate is $20 two hundred dollars for one hour no. I, I that's the average <laughs> damn near around. Um, wow. and wow. i pay sixty dollars for a session <laughs> she said she's Girl, amazing <laughs> <laughs> and I, go, I just go that's every other week great. because i can't afford that but yeah. she's amazing um so openpathcollective.org and um you can search for like it's a lot of black therapists and they're mm -hmm. dedicated to providing this lower cost care um and then there's also Psychology Today. Uh, if you go on there, you can search, like, if you want a black female therapist or someone who specializes like in, build like, a LGBT. Bear. Build a counselor. Yes, you can, you can <laughs> all these different categories <laughs> and, like, absolutely. location and price, yeah. and then you can see the list of people there, and you can call them and see if they take your insurance wow. or, like, what their rates are and things like that. And then mm -hmm. I also have to plug one last place. Um, mm -hmm. I work at the Grady Nia Project. Mm -hmm. um, so it's in Grady on the 13th floor. Mm -hmm. um, it's for women who peak. have experienced oh, domestic yeah. violence or have had a suicide oh, yeah. attempt in the past year. Mm -hmm. And so they do a lot of group therapy for them. And then after they come three weeks in a row, we also help with transportation, like parking or MARTA tickets. Mm -hmm. And we provide um, free individual therapy for them. So all of those services are free. Wow. For That's, amazing. That's amazing. That's right behind I the school. I did not know with that, that many much. resources. Yeah. That mean, for I thought it was just a counseling set, a center, and I, and I was hearing yeah. about it being backed up, so I was like, I'm not even going to fucking try. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know about all these other opportunities, so I'm going to definitely hop yeah. on. Are they available um, over the summer, like with um, the... Uh, the the one at Urban Life is that yep. available over open the during the summer? Wow, yeah, wow. I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna okay, get on that. Yes, get definitely on hop on everybody. And this is why y'all network on, on campus yeah. and you yeah. talk definitely, to everybody. You never real. know who you gonna run into. You never know what you wow. gonna find I did not out, know honey. That at all. Yeah, man. <laughs> we <Jeez>. got a <laughs> network. <laughs> so we have came up on our end of the show, and we're gonna end it a little differently <laughs> today. I got a question for you guys. Um, everybody, what advice do you wish you had ten years ago? Mm. I would start with myself. I would I would tell myself things are not going to go as planned. Mm -hmm. Um I, I see I still it's always good to have a plan, but I used to be so scared of change to like I used to just cling on to mm -hmm. for dear life for like anything that changed and, and I just had to like in a, in the past few years, definitely the last ten years, it, mm -hmm. it, it has definitely taught me change is okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes change is putting you on a better path and a better direction to meet people that's going to further your, like, that's going to give you different opportunities later on. So mm -hmm. my thing is just, like, it, one thing I could have told myself or I've learned in the past 10 years is that change is not always a bad thing, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody, Anybody I'll go. Um, <laughs> so um, I think that mine's kind of, it's parallel to yours, but a little bit different. Um, I think mine's is, um, your, it's, not everything is going to always go my way. Not everything is going to be perfect. I have mm -hmm. a, I have a always a, I used to, have always a problem with just not 
when things don't go good, I it kind of break me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. had to realize that that's life. Like, that's what life is. And, that, and when I realized it was when life was happening to yeah. me. And I had to realize, okay, this is something that normal people have mm-hmm. to deal with. It's just mm-hmm. that as a child, I guess I was guarded from yeah. it. So I didn't realize that, like, bad stuff happens yeah. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of got to roll with it. Roll with your punches and keep it moving, you know? But, uh, yeah, I do wish I had that advice that it's going to happen anyways. And yeah. you just got to learn how to play your cards right. Yeah. Uh, I would say, I would say, I would tell myself, it's okay to ask for help. Mm. I'm stubborn, still stubborn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get a little better, <laughs> <laughs> but I was just—I think because it's like maybe like socialization, and even being taught like being certain like an alpha male, and that a male has to provide and a male has to do this. Mm-hmm. I have certain codes and morals that I I live by, and I hold myself to a standard, and so I feel like. As a man, I can't ask nobody for help. Or mm. even in the military, they socialized you where they used to tell us, you know, suffer in silence. You know mm. what I mean? Everybody is sucking. It. So it's like, damn, you know, I would think that nobody cared. But it's okay to ask for help, bro, because we all need somebody to get Definitely. to where we need to get to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like mine is the opposite. I feel like I should have did more things by myself and try mm-hmm. to take advantage of certain opportunities I had by myself right. instead mm-hmm. of waiting for help. And I was looking for certain people to help me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never really had nobody help me, but I was always looking for it. And I feel mm-hmm. like it really held me back from just certain things. And now I want to go certain places just because I didn't have people with me and just, just certain yeah. things. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, that's one, a, that's uh, one, and one more thing, like, and I really, really wish I would have known this, mm-hmm. was um, don't wait. Do it now. Yes. Yeah. Start now. Don't, don't wait. If you wait out for years, mm-hmm. I always procrastinate. But when you just go ahead and do it, bro, you got to get it rolling. Even with this show, we we, yeah, we yeah, were we sitting said at the it. table, like, yeah. having a Literally. conversation. <laughs> Jay <Jamie> pulled out <laughs> that goddamn <laughs> booklet. We was like, let's do let's this do it, right man. now. Like, if not, you're not going to do yeah. it. Yeah. We if we would have not, if we would have just been like, we still would have been talking about this show. We wouldn't Definitely. be six episodes in. Like, yeah. as much shit as we talking to Officer of Black Suit and Achievement. Yeah. We should, it should have been We should have been at a TV show. So, Sierra, yeah. Yeah, what would you have told you don't try to sneak out of there. Right? Oh, 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 <laughs> you gotta get your due diligence now. Um, I think I would have told myself ten years ago and still now that you can be strong and brave and broken all at once, mm. and that you're don't be afraid to grow through what you mm-hmm. go through. Like you, if you are broken, it's okay because like that's how you get fixed. That's yeah. how like if wow. if your growth is stunted, mm. that's, that's amazing. even more reason to pay attention her. to how yeah. to help that's, yourself. That, that's the word. If <laughs> you're broke, that's how you get fixed. That's why. <laughs> That's, that, okay, that need to be going viral. Like, right, okay, yeah, you said a lot. That in a was bit of time. yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay, so that's a good way to finish. This man. is your girl Jada. Y'all can follow me on Instagram at the real Jada Dean. This your boy Tay. Y'all can follow me at underscore one T A E underscore. Yes, you. you. Social media. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have social media. I don't really remember what it is. I think it's, I think it's um underscore C I Sunshine on Instagram. All right, and this is your boy Thomas. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Thomas underscore Jones, the letter I, the letter V. Ali Joaquin underscore Ali. Oh, I got a Twitter now. Y'all better start following me on Twitter <laughs> at Ali Joaquin. Don't laugh at me. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> and this is The Bill on Power 108.9. I know that she some bad.